This video is an update on the cheapest Tesla Model 3 performance in the country, which I bought a few weeks ago. And we're here with Andy, because we're here to do a battery health test. Believe it or not, this Tesla has done 238,000 miles. This has now done 218,000 miles. Two of probably the highest. There's only one other that I know in the UK that's covered more. I think there's one at 250, 260 now. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I, I think these two, in terms of the performance models, I reckon these are the two, probably in second and third place, as far as I know. There uh, we maybe. go. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take the podium. <laughs> Unless, you know, put it in the comments if you've got more miles than that. Yeah, I just daily, it does everything I need. I don't even wash it anymore. That's, that's how bad <laughs> it's got. <laughs> cool. Right, let's go and do the battery test and see what it's all about. Fire it up. Right, so we're in the car with Andy and we've plugged in the OBD link and we've got ScanMy Tesla app ready to go on, I'm not sure what we call it. I'm calling her lucky at the moment, but it might be not so lucky depending <laughs> on- uh, We're about to find out. Yeah, we're just about to find out. <laughs> Those that might have seen some of the comments uh, who'd actually seen the car on BCA, BCA thought grade C 78% battery health. But we're going to go deep dive to find out a little bit more with regards to the cell voltages. Not how many kilowatts have been AC charged, how many kilowatts have been DC charged, and really like dive into the detail. So let's do this now live. I've not seen this, so let's check it out. Right, so you've got 60.4 left. 60.4 kilowatt yeah. hours left. Okay, well, yeah, that's so that's 60. about 242 ish miles well 100 percent a... the other day and it was showing sort of two three nine so it might have been so in that ballpark yeah yeah i mean that, that that will wobble up and down a little bit but that's i would say for that mileage not bad at all but so the good. really really good thing is down here yeah. your cell imbalance is absolutely perfect yes six that... millivolts that means that they're Brilliant. they're all in line um, so although you've lost a bit of capacity, the, the actual health of the battery is really pretty good. The, you haven't got like a bad module or one that's much lower. So you've got general yeah. wear and tear, but you don't have anything anything malignant in there, basically. And that's the most important thing that I was worried about, because if you've got one of the cells that is massively out compared to another one, so there's a bigger gap of voltages between the pack, then that is cause to concern. Whether me charging it from, you know, uh, having it quite low and charge it up to 100%, whether that helped uh, balance the cells, I don't know. There are quite a few ways of balancing the cells. Let's have a look at the DC charge and AC charge, because compared to okay. our Simon's um, uh, Tesla Model 3 long range, which he bought with 216,000 miles from BCA, which is 88%, uh, battery health. I mean, you're still showing like 300 mile range, which is amazing. That, really interesting to that's see. That's very suspicious, isn't it? I yeah, mean, that well, just, I, I know they've said that there isn't a new battery, but that's a 50,000 mile battery. That ain't well, a 200,000 mile well, battery. I'm, I'm hoping that this test will help show I mean, it where, could, the differences. But it, it, it depends on what. It could know. be that that's a long range model and it could just be the performance hoovers up the battery a little bit quicker because of yeah, course it chucks a bit more current. Hotter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, that's just a working theory, but I mean, they've got very, very lucky with that battery because that mm. is, that's almost new. I mean, that's yeah. ridiculous range for that. So they've done well on that one. And if anybody wants to know, would I have preferred to have bought the long range rather than this performance? To be honest, I much prefer to have the performance because at the end of the day, I'm a charge head. But let's get into a bit more detail because I'm sure everybody wants to see it. So very, very interesting. Massive amounts of supercharging. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. There so, you go. So exactly. you're talking about three quarters, 75% super DC charge versus about 25% wow, AC. Okay. So this has just been hammered. Supercharged the whole supercharged time. Supercharged the hell out And when of you it. look at the battery health, that just kind of shows you that really supercharging hasn't done it any harm at all. I mean, you're, you're, you're similar capacity to my car at the moment, but my um, cell imbalance is, is not as good as that. And Andy's car is over here. It's a Stealth and it's done 238,000 miles. And there's a video up here, up there, <laughs> uh, up there uh, where we went into the detail probably 20,000 miles ago when you first picked it up. Um, but yeah, so just to, and, and although, you know, my battery, my battery is fine. Um, it's got a slightly wider cell imbalance and the capacity is about the same as yours. Probably when I bought it, it was almost exactly the same as yours. Because when I, ironically, the mileage you bought this at is the same mileage I bought that at. I've uh, done 20,000 okay. miles since. Yeah. And um, it's gone from about 
61 to about 59.5 something like that yeah okay so again i'm showing maybe about 0.9 kilowatt hours less than yours my cell imbalance is slightly wider um but my mine's the ac dc has been reversed so okay. mine's been predominantly AC. AC charged. Well, th this and, could be the argument for the so R. This, Simmons's one because that this, one was majority AC charged, wasn't it? Yeah, but the point I'm making here is, although ours are completely reversed, our batteries look quite similar. Oh. With the same sort of mileage. So I'm oh, saying okay. that although I'm predominantly AC oh. charged and you're predominantly supercharged, there isn't much difference in them. Although your, yours is a Panasonic battery because it's an early one and this is an LG battery. Oh, that And I the LG realize. battery is supposed to have better longevity. Ah. But the Panasonic battery is supposed to be better for fast charging. So I hear. It'd be really interesting in the comments. Whack it in the comments for you know, even more Tesla nerds than us uh, that might know that. So what, how many times have the wipers have gone? And we, then there, there, there is a bit more to come because I'm going to be uh, going through a few more bits. On interesting the is this as well. Look at the number of charge cycles. Well, how many that, charge cycles? Sixteen hundred. You know, and and what's um, yours in comparison then? About fifteen hundred. So oh, okay. yours has been charged a few more times. Not that I think that really makes very much difference. I mean, these charge cycles move, actually move up and down because obviously they're saying it's a little hard to define is what is a full charge. Yeah. You know, um, so... That's really good news about the cell imbalance though. Yeah, it's fantastic. See, I mean, that's like a new one. Yeah. And, and actually it's exactly the same as um, new one, but Richard's less one. less energy. <laughs> what, yeah. do we, what do we think that the actual uh, capacity is based on these figures then? Uh, the capacity, no, the, it tells you the capacity directly that you have got. As a percentage, though. And As a percentage, I think it's divided by 78.8, if I got it right. Isn't do that right? Do we divide it? Now, this is the um, yeah, debate I know. we is, had last this time. Is the, uh, so, do we divide it by the usable or do we divide it by the total? 60. I think Tesla divide it by the total. So, I've, I'm saying that if you do, if you worst, you make it the worst case scenario, so yep. we're dividing your total by the actual total usable, including the buffer, you're at 77%. Okay, was which that is, what the BCA test said? Yeah, uh, BCA said about that. So, so that that sounds about right. And, yeah. and 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 given that you're running, do you say about two hundred and forty miles at one hundred percent now, something like yeah, that, yeah. which is perfectly usable. Have you? The only other thing I was going to ask is, have you supercharged it yet? Yes, I have. And did it make the full two hundred fifty kilowatts? Uh, it was like one hundred and forty. It was off. Uh, I had lots of issues. Oh, In okay. fact, <clears throat> I'll show you the issues that I had now. So we're at grid serve off the M4. First Grisaf charger didn't work. This one, a couple of times, it's now activated and finally got the green light. It's like 75p, something like that. But I'm not gonna be here long because I don't actually need to be here long, but it's charging at 136. Okay, well, that's not too bad, but obviously it's gonna cost a lot. So I don't wanna be charging here too long. Anyway, fun and games with public chargers, eh? No issues with Tesla. As you can see, this is why I bought a Tesla, because public charging is an absolute nightmare. It does work sometimes, and you've got, you know, if you go to a specific charge that you know that, you know, work and reliable, all the rest of it, then happy days. But it should be convenient, and that's why I bought another Tesla. And am I unhappy that it's got, I, you know, I already knew that the battery was going to be circa 80, late 70%, which is fine, because this is going to be mother half's daily, and she don't need the extra mileage. So that's absolutely fine by me. And as Andy mentioned there, it is really, really tight. So all the cell balances are nice and close, which gives me a lot of faith. Yes, okay, it's you know degraded eight, uh, 20%, but for 218,000 miles, that's pretty good. But what was important to me was do the cells match up, and they do. So that gives me lots and lots of comfort. I can sleep well at night. So unfortunately on the uh, Scanmo test drive, it doesn't do number of wipers, but something that we did forget is the amount of power regen. So this will be really interesting, how much power that this has recouped under regenerative braking. Let's have a look. Oh my goodness, there's a bumblebee that was trying to get in. This, this is, uh, it's a bit of a common thing with this car. Um, right, so what was the regen, sorry? Uh, 23 megawatt hours, so an absolutely wow. massive amount of regen. I mean, it's had more wow. regen than it's actually had AC charge. No way. Yeah, 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 23 megawatt hours of uh, regen and uh, about 18 megawatt hours of AC That's <laughs> and crazy, about 50, 56 megawatt hours of uh, supercharge. So why am I at my local Tesla garage? Let me jump in the car and tell you why. So the reason I'm at Tesla is because I've got a problem and not, you know, I, I thought that it was sorted as you might have seen from my first video. Um, it said that the air conditioning system had been replaced now, I didn't recognize it on my first journey because as you would have 
recognised in, in the first episode of this series is I was hyperminding this car when I drove it back. I wasn't using the air conditioning system. Now, when I got it home, it's now saying cabinet climate control system requires service and it's not heating the car properly. It's not cooling the car properly. And I don't know if it's going to be really expensive or a simple fix. So that's a bit of a worry. And we're going to go into detail on the next video. <laughs>